So good evening, former players, parents, fans, and welcome to the 2013 Fordham Football Team Banquet. I'm Frank Sacco, a Fordham College graduate in 1987 and a former Fordham football player. I would like to work, welcome, and I'm currently serving as the president of the Fordham Gridiron Club. And I want to really just say thanks to everybody for coming out and supporting the team and joining us this evening. So with that, what we want to do to gather this evening is to recognize and honor the outstanding team, the most outstanding team in Fordham football history, the 2013 Fordham Rams. As president of the Gridiron Club, I've had the honor of meeting so many of you in the room tonight and throughout the course of the season. And allow me to be clear, the men in this room made in Fordham football history this past season with the most wins in the history of the program, an epic win over BCS School Temple University, and making it to the FCS playoffs. The 2013 season is truly one that will not soon be forgotten. Congratulations, guys. As president of the Gridiron Club, I want to also make you aware of some of the history we're making in the fundraising front. First, we've raised over a million dollars in gifts and pledges this past year, which is fabulous. And that's bringing us closer to reaching our four-year goal of $4 million. I want to thank all of you that participated as all of you are playing a major role in taking our great program to the next level. This year, we are challenged at raising an additional $680,000 in order to stay on track. And we'll need all your help to get there. Also, we need parents and family members in the room tonight that are not members of the Gridiron Club to please join our club. It's really simple. It's, it's easy as making a gift for $100 and joining the club. And feel, please feel free to approach me, Jack Persini, or any member of the development staff here tonight to ask about how we can make this happen. It's really simple, guys. The more members we have, the more support Coach Moorhead and the team receives. And it's that team that we're here to celebrate tonight. And to get us started, uh, it's my pleasure to welcome Father John Denniston, the Fordham football chaplain, to the podium to deliver th this evening's invocation. Father Denniston. You're luck in luck. I'm not doing the invocation. Will the six members of Sister Anne's prayer group? I taught most of them in theology, a few of them passed, but they're gonna come up here tonight and they're gonna have we're gonna have a living kind of prayer offered by these great men. So welcome them, they're all a little nervous. It was right before the big one, and the football player said, Excuse me, guys, for just a sec, while I go bow my head. And in the quiet of that room, the football player prayed, Oh, God, if nothing, hear me now. I know that fate is made. So help us, Lord, to win this game. It's the big one, man, you see. If we lose it, that's it for us. Please do this, Lord, for me. And as his body knelt in prayer, he looked up to the sky. And while I'm here and have some time, I need to ask you, why? They say you never help teams win. Just do it once, I pray. We will pay you back in kinder deeds or in another way. The reason I can't help you win, the Lord just then replied, is as you're asking me to win, so is the other side. <laughs> I'm everybody's father and I must not take one side. So games are played all on your own, or they would all be tied. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't pray. 
he answered them with care. You can pray that players don't get hurt and that all the calls are fair. And while the player heard his voice, he bowed his head in prayer. I pray for fairness, said the boy, and for your tender care. You shall be blessed, the Lord replied, your team and you the same. And now, now will you excuse me, boy, I, I cannot miss, miss this game. <laughs>
uh, unselfishness is a word that you know is described in the award. And I think if there was one characteristic to describe Jake, unselfishness, the ability to put uh, others in front of yourself, I think that would definitely define Jake. Uh, this year, watching the team from afar, uh, as a, obviously as a fan, having a close relationship with some of the players, being here in the past, having recruited some of them, and uh, the coaching staff, if there was one characteristic that would define this team, it would be unselfishness. Uh, and they really bought into the team concept. So I think there's no better person to get this award than Jake Rodriguez. Now for the real athletes, the big guys. Right? <laughs> the, uh, the first award that I'm going to present today is the uh, Edward Donowski Award. Okay? And uh, kind of what the award stands for is the Fordham Football's Leadership Award. Okay? And it's named for Ed Donowski, all right, Fordham Rose Hill graduate of 90, 1934, and is uh, presented annually to an outstanding leader or leaders on and off the gridiron. All right, the inscription on the award reads in part, quote, in honor of a son of Fordham, in recognition of his many significant contributions to, to the university as one of its greatest student athletes and most loved teachers. And I think these two young men um, kind of embody that. Between the two of them, okay, which I both had the pleasure of coaching, uh, we're talking about 62 combined starts here at Rose Hill, uh, over half of which were wins. Um, two of the finest young men you'll ever have a chance to meet, and I wish them all the best of luck going, going forward in their lives after football and after Fordham, uh, Stephen Tapia and Tom Fisher. Okay, uh, so the, the next tro the next awards we're going to give out is the uh, the Lansing Award. Okay, and uh, what we uh, what this award means? Okay, it's named for Jim Lansing, another Fordham College Rose Hill graduate, class of 1941. He is a former All American player and coach at Fordham, and is uh, presented annually to the Rams' most outstanding linemen or plural linemen. Okay, and these two young men, I think, uh, both uh, embody that. They're probably our best players on both sides of the ball up front. Between the two of them, we have two first-team All-Conference Patriot League players, uh, uh, All-Americans, um, team leader on defense and sacks and tackles for loss, or not tackles for loss, sacks, uh, and, um, and probably our, um, our, uh, our leader up front on offense in the offensive line, that's Mason Halter and DeAndre Slate. The next uh, award I'll be presenting is the 2013 Defensive Player of the Year Award. Uh, th this year's recipient, if you looked at, you know, as coaches sometimes when we're in recruiting and whatnot, you look at what prototypical size was or prototypical frame. If you looked at this player, you know, at six foot, 205 pounds, he wouldn't define what a prototype linebacker would be like. But if you look at in terms of speed, football intelligence, uh, effort, and heart, he would be the top of any combine in the country. Uh, I've only got a chance to be around this player for the past three weeks, but he's been as impressive of a player as I've been around in, in, in my short time coaching. And uh, obviously, Coach Moorhead mentioned all the, the uh, All American teams that he mentioned uh, he was elected to. He had 124 tackles, 94 solo tackles, which is unbelievable, led the country. 16 TFLs, five sacks. An interception, five PBUs, and five forced fumbles, which was in uh, number nine in the country. Um, unbelievable, unbelievable year, unbelievable kid. Also, Patriot League Player of the Year, a Player of the Week, which is something impressive. I mean, he was the uh, best player of anybody that played in the Patriot uh, League on defense three times, which is a conference record. Uh, this year's defensive MVP goes to Stephen Hodge. <laughs> It's an honor to present uh, the 2013 Offensive Player of the Year for our team. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, when I got hired here in August, uh, it was really a two-day process, and the Fordham team had already been practicing. So I didn't have a ton of time really to frame my expectations of uh, what the Fordham receivers were going to be, but I did a little research, and uh, 
I knew Tabucky Jones personally uh, from when we were both at UConn together. I knew he was going to be a great player. Uh, I did enough research to know that Brian Wetzel was a returning all-conference player. So when my brother asked me if we had any good wide receivers at Fordham, I said, well, we've got two really good ones. We've got Tabucky Jones and Brian Wetzel. And uh, as long as we can find a third guy who's not a complete squid, we'll probably be okay. Uh, I was really wrong that day. And it wasn't because Brian and Tabucky were anything bad, but because I made a mistake of underestimating Sam Ajala, and it's a mistake I'll never make again. Um, Sam's 93 catches, 1,646 yards, and 14 touchdowns set numerous school records um, and earned him countless All-American honors. Um, so without any further ado, the 2013 Offensive Player of the Year, Sam Ajala. Good evening. I have the privilege to present the, uh, the Team MVP Award, which is named after Richard B. Marin. Uh, Mr. Marin was a longtime president of the Gridiron Club, uh, Fordham College Rose Hill graduate of 67 and Fordham Law 1970. Um, the, the award is given annually to an outstanding individual on the football team. Um, this year's recipient of the award um, through record-breaking performances, uh, through uh, passion and a will to win, led Fordham to obviously one of the most historic seasons we've had in school history. Um, he set numerous records. Uh, he has, now has all the single game and single season uh, passing records here at Fordham, uh, surpassing the likes of some guy in the 90s named Joe Moorhead. <laughs> and the great John Skelton. Um, but now this young man's name is at the top of those, and, and we, we know that um, we have more exciting games to come. So the, the team MVP, the Richard Marin MVP for the Fordham Rams this year is Michael Niebuhr. Let's put our hands together one last time for, our, for these uh, award winners. think back um, to the, uh, it was December of 2011, uh, standing in the locker room in front of this team for the first time and having an opportunity to address them and telling them that we were going to be a team that prided itself on discipline, on work ethic, on attention to detail, on accountability, and those were going to be the cornerstones of our program, and we were going to lay the foundation for a team that was going to be a Patriot League championship team that consistently fought for the national championship. And Michael Martin sitting here tonight and guys from his class and um, having the opportunity to go to different events and talk to people um, who are associated with the program and telling them that, you know, not only were, were we going to be a team that was, could carry sustained success and consistently win a Patriot League championship and, and fight for a national championship, uh, it was met obviously with some justified skepticism and some eye rolls. And, hey, coach, how about a winning record first before you start talking about national championship? And I understand that. But the plan was in place. And... The 2012 team did an excellent job in laying the foundation of what, our, of what we wanted our program to be and where we wanted it to go, uh, led by Michael and his classmates, and we finished with a 6-5 and five record with three of the league losses coming by eight combined points. And following that year, the challenge was to our, our senior class of 2013, and, um, you know, we asked them that to, to stand on the shoulders of those who had gone before them, which would be the class from this year, and we asked them, what, what did they, how did they want to be remembered? And, and what did they want their legacy to be as a group and as a, as a, a football program? And I think the legacy speaks for itself. Um, and it has been talked about many times tonight. Most, most wins in school history, highest ranking in school history at one point, number five in the year, finishing number nine and number ten. Two wins over top ten teams at home for the first time in school history. Beating Temple, which cannot be underestimated what a, an unbelievable accomplishment that is to beat a BCS team in their home stadium. Uh, with 85 scholarships and all the things that they have going on and for us to just be resilient and convert two fourth downs in the last drive and win it on the last play of the game uh, speaks volume for our guys to get to the round of Sweet 16. And, um, you know, I think w when the question is asked from this class of 2013 seniors, what type of legacy did you leave? Uh, you left, left a legacy that uh, will forever be compared to, that, that every Fordham football team that follows you will be compared to the season that you accomplished in 2013. So let's put our hands together for this year's senior class. And 
it, as, as a token of our appreciation for all their hard work and effort over the four years on the field and in the classroom, uh, we framed their jersey from the um, Columbia game, from the Liberty Cup. So we'd like to bring those guys up, award them their, their jerseys, and um, you know, just say thank you one last time to these seniors. Uh, Vince Antonosi. George Apostolopoulos. Nick DeFilippi. Tom Fisher. Great story uh, came to us at an open trout during the school year. It stuck with us. It's an unbelievable, unbelievable job. Uh, Marco Fragnito. <laughs> Anthony Pesanello. <laughs> Carlton Coots. Where's Big 9-5 at? Kevin Scanlon. Fire up. Let's go. Andrew Spinarco. Joe Sullivan. Stephen Tapia. Eli Tenuta. Did I miss it? No, not order. Jake Rodriguez. Jumping all around here, Jake. I'm sorry. Guys, you want to get a group picture over here? I got you, man. Good. One more big round of applause for this machine. As we mentioned before, with these guys setting the bar so high, um, we head into our last morning workout tomorrow of our morning competition phase of our winter workout um, program. Uh, we begin spring ball on Wednesday, and we'll finish that up on the 25th or 26th of April. Whatever that Saturday is will be our spring game. So um, we understand that we, that we were three games short of the national championship. All right? And in the back of our shirts, it says unfinished business. So. Our, year, our goals on a yearly basis are to win the Liberty Cup and win the Ram Crusader Cup and keep those at home, uh, have a winning non-conference record, win the Patriot League, qualify for the playoffs, and win a national championship. 
And in entering year three, only one of those goals has not been accomplished, and that's to win a national championship. And this will be the first year out of three where our goals and our expectations really align. And um, if you could look back and say that a team had four, that had four winning seasons in 26 years uh, would be fighting for a national championship, um, you know, I don't think Vegas would take that bet. Um, but I promise you this, uh, make sure everyone in the, in the audience here gets online, Expedia.com or wherever you to go to make your travel plans, and make sure you don't book anything for the first weekend of January, because uh, this football program is going to be in Frisco, Texas, playing for the national championship. Right. Thank you very much for your time. Thank, thank you for everyone's support of the program, and we're going to bring up Frank Sacco to uh, close the evening off. All right, fire up. Go Rams. So before closing, ladies and gentlemen, Fordham Football would like to thank you all for your support, your generosity in attendance this evening and throughout the entire season. We have numerous sellouts, first time for the school in a long time, and you all were a part of it. We cannot wait until the fall and are ready for another phenomenal season. As you can hear from Coach Joe, he's excited too. We encourage you all to get involved with the team and the Gridiron Club any way that you can. There is something special happening with this program, and I know that you all want to be part of it. So to close out the festivities, first I'd like to ask the uh, members of the football team all to stand up. And for one last time, if you could close out the ceremony by singing the ram. CJ, kick it off. Good job.